Monday the 15th of August 1774. In the PM I made an excursion in company with Master Wales on the other side of the harbour, where we met from the natives very different treatment from what we had done in the morning. These people, in whose neighbourhood lived our friend Power Wang, being better acquainted with us than those who we had seen in the morning, showed a readiness to oblige us in everything in their power. Here was a little straggling village, consisting of a few houses which needed no other description than to compare them to the roof of a thatched house taken off the walls and placed on the ground. The figure was oblong and open at both ends. Some indeed had a little fence or wall of reeds at each end about three foot high. Some seemed to be intended for more families than one, as they had a fireplace near each end, where other means and small hovels which I understood were only to sleep in. In one of these, which with some others stood in a plantation, but separated from them by a fence, I, astund, I understood was a dead corpse. They made signs that he slipped or was dead. Circumstances sufficiently pointed out the latter. Curious, however, to say all I could I prevailed on an elderly man to go with me within the fence which surrounded it. One end of the hut was closed up, the same as the, si the, the, same as the sides the other end had been open, but now shut up with mats, which would not suffer me to remove. He also seemed unwilling. I, sho I should look into a matted bag or basket which hung to the end of the hut, and which was a piece of roasted yam and some kind of leaves all quite fresh. Thus I was led to believe that these people dispose of the dead something in the same manner as at Otahiti. The man had about his neck fastened to a string two or three locks of human hair, and a woman present had several. I offered something in exchange for them, but they give me to understand this could not be done, as they belonged to the person who laid in the hut. A similar custom to this is observed by the New Zealanders. Near most of their larger houses are placed upright in the ground in a square position about three foot from each side the stems of four coconut trees some of our gentlemen who first saw these seemed to think they had a religious tendency but i was now fully satisfied that they would hang cocoa upon to dry the houses are generally built in an open area where the air has a free circulation in some are a large tree or two whose spreading branches afford an agreeable shade and retreating from the scorching sun tuesday the 16th of august 1774. Winds northerly fair weather. In the PM, Master F and I took a walk to the eastern seashore in order to have a sight of an island to the southeast, which these people called Anatom. The high table island we discovered the morning we anchored here is called Ironman or Fut Futuna, and the flat isle lying off the harbour, Ima. I observed that in their sugar plantations were dug holes or pits about four feet deep and five or six in diameter. We were made to understand that these pits were to catch rats, which when once in they could not get out and so were easily killed. These animals, which are destructive to the canes, are here in plenty. In the morning, after having, a, have, after having got everything in readiness to put to sea and waited for nothing but a wind, we found the tiller sprung and the others were detected and other ways defective in the rudder ahead, and by some strange neglect we had never a spare one on board, and this was not known till now we wanted it. While the carpenter was unshipping the old tiler, I went ashore to cut down a tree to make a new one. But as we knew, but of one fit for the purpose which stood near the watering place, and this power wang had des desired might not be cut down, and I had promised it would not be proper application, was therefore necessary in order not to give umbrage to the natives. Therefore, as soon as I had landed, I sent for old Powawang, and as soon as he came him a present of a dog and a large piece of cloth, and then made known to him that our great steering paddle was broke, and I wanted that tray to make a new one. He presently gave his consent, as well as several others present, and we set people to work to cut it down. It was easy to see that this method, which I took to obtain the tree, was very agreeable to all the people present. After this, I returned on board with Powong, who stayed dinner. After the tiller was un unshipped, we found that by scarfing a piece to the inner end and lifting it farther into the rudder head, it would still perform its office, and the carpenters and the smiths were set about this work.